Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm in the kitchen today and I'm going to be making just some plain old fashioned meatloaf. Uh, nothing special about it or anything. So let's get started. I'm going to break up about three, three pieces of just some old stale bread. These are the end pieces. You can use oatmeal if you like. I usually do use oatmeal, but I don't have any in the house right now. So I'm just going to break up this bread and this will serve as my binder. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with the bread now is add about a half a cup of milk, and then we'll just let the milk absorb into the bread. Okay, I'll set that aside. I already diced up my vegetables that are going into the meatloaf. Y'all, I injured my leg. And I have no idea how I did it. I, you know, everything was fine Thursday. You know, we cooked and I made the videos. And thank y'all so much for watching them and all of the nice and beautiful comments that you made. I really appreciate it. And I know that y'all enjoyed it just from the comments that you left for me and for my daughter. And Jill and I both appreciate it so much. We love y'all. I'm just going to put a gob of lard into the skillet to saute my, you can use vegetable oil or olive oil, whatever you have on hand. I'm going to use my lard. It will definitely add flavor to the meatloaf. But anyway, Friday, um, I had run a couple of errands, and I reckon when I went to get out of the car and put my left leg out, I must have twisted and turned it. Because by the time I got home Friday night, I barely, I mean, I had to practically crawl up the stairs. I was hanging on to the railing. I could not put any weight at all on my left leg. It's just right behind my knee and my calf muscle, kind of on that left, outside left of the calf muscle. Y'all, it hurts so bad. So I've just been nursing it and taking good care of it. I did have to go over to the little ideal market. I think it was Monday. I was completely out of milk and bread and eggs and everything. So I thought, well, I'll just go over to the ideal. It's a small store. I can park right at the front door practically. So um, I took good care of the pool to muscle Saturday and Sunday. I just kept putting ice on it. I, I, I iced it for the first 72 hours. And it got better, and I thought I would be okay to go to the grocery store, but that injured it even more. So then starting Monday after I got home from the store, I began putting the hot Epsom salt packs on it. And it's eased up. I can drag around and at least get into the kitchen, into the bathroom, and the bedroom, but I'm not going out. I'm not even going to try to go up and down the stairs. So Jill put the children in after school care this week. Okay, so the vegetables call for um, a little garlic. I cut up about five cloves. And I cut, dice very thinly, a half of a bell pepper. And then I cut up a small, not really, this is like a medium onion. It's a little bit too much onion for me. So I won't saute all of it, but I'm just going to go ahead and soften these up a little bit. I just don't like raw onion or raw peppers in my meatloaf because I don't think they ever cook down enough. So I would rather go ahead and soften them up a little bit. This one I didn't cut up too good. Y'all, now the onions are coming from China. I noticed that they had put glue or whatever it is that they put on the root so that the roots won't sprout. And the onions are tough and they don't have much flavor to them. Well, that makes me so mad that you can only get onions and garlic that are, that's grown in China. I guess you can get it grown in America, but why even have it here in America to sell to begin with when we can grow our own garlic and 
Now this bell pepper might be too much too. I don't want to overpower it with bell pepper and onion. So I'll let this cook down and I'll be back. Okay, this has softened up a little bit. So I'm going to add my garlic. I don't want any of it to really brown. I just want it to soften so that it won't be crispy inside of the meatloaf. I think I'll a little salt and pepper to it and maybe some garlic powder. I'm not measuring it. Y'all are all good cooks. You know how to measure. I don't have to tell you. Oh, and I want to thank the Wooden Spoon and Karen Redding and all of you other good cooks out there who gave me the recipe for making the giblet gravy with water and cornstarch or milk and cornstarch. I really appreciate it because really the only way I've ever made it, because I learned how from growing up in South Mississippi and living in Louisiana where we make roux with flour and butter, I've never made it with cornstarch. So I really do appreciate Y'all being kind and thoughtful and generous with your time to leave a comment and leave me the recipe for making gravy with cornstarch. Thank you so much. I will definitely do that next time. The reason I didn't boil eggs and slice them up into the giblet gravy is because Hussani doesn't eat eggs and neither does Ife. Now, I did put eggs in the dressing, but they don't know about it because... <laughs> Mama always put boiled eggs in the dressing, but I couldn't let that be shown, so I just put in a couple of eggs and mixed them in with the dressing. I don't know why Ife doesn't like eggs. I guess it's just something she inherited because her father doesn't like them. Isa likes them. He eats an egg just about every morning. Some type of egg sandwich or eggs with <clears throat> turkey bacon or something like that. So I have the oven preheating to 375. Let this cook just a minute longer and then we will put the meat mug together. I have the ingredients sitting out here for a corn casserole. I actually got it off the channel called um, Rachel. Rachel cooks with love. Y'all, she's such a good cook. Everything she makes is just perfect and it looks so delicious. I've never seen her make anything that didn't look delicious or any type of make any type of mistake. Okay, I'll let that just sit there and finish getting a little tender. I have this is about a pound and a half and this is 93.7 on um, ground beef. Go ahead and plop it into my bowl, and then we will add the bread and milk. Y'all, since I did all of that heavy cleaning in my apartment, I can clean it now in about a half hour. It's so easy to keep it clean once you get it clean. I'm still working on the stairs. I had to stop because of my injured leg. But I just took a little sponge and took my broom and swept this... this like three stairs at a time, and instead of trying to clean all 17 at one time, I decided just to do a few at a time, but I had to stop doing that. But I would get the stairs cleaned eventually, and the threshold. That's one thing in my house that I like to keep clean. Not that I get that many visitors, but if I do, I want the first thing for them to see is a clean threshold. Okay, I can't put the vegetables in here yet because I don't want to scramble the egg that I just put in. So I'm going to let those cool down. Just use my hand. <laughs> Y'all, you can't make meatloaf with a utensil now, can you? I have really enjoyed these pink bowls. If I'm ever back in that area where that store is, I'll go in and see if I can find any more. But... Yeah, that's the type of store, it, it doesn't keep regular items like a Dollar Tree. It's more like a closeout store. They just have miscellaneous stuff 
it's hit or miss. Okay, I'm going to let this wait for a while and let this cool down. I think I'll put those vegetables in the refrigerator. Like I said, I don't want a scrambled egg in my meatloaf. And I'll be back after they get cool. Okay, we can add the rest of the ingredients. Put the rest of that milk in there. And the veggies. And then I need to put in the seasonings. Probably only about an eighth of a teaspoon. A little salt. Some, I know Jill, when she uses Tony Chasseries, that's all she uses. She doesn't use extra salt. Just going to spice it up a little bit with some hot pepper flakes. The Tony Chasseries has a little cayenne pepper in it. And this is just some onion powder and garlic powder. And my secret ingredient, Lee and Perrin's. This is a brand new fresh bottle. Just a dash, we don't want it to overpower it. Okay, just blend it all up with my hand and then I will form it into my pan and I'm going to bake it at 375. I want to make a glaze for the top of it. So I'll go ahead and put it in the oven and let it bake while I make the glaze and then I'll take it out and put the glaze on it. It's probably going to have to bake at least 45 minutes. It's not that big of a meatloaf. I could have used the full two pounds that I had, but I made me a hamburger, a couple of hamburgers with it yesterday. 